Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're testing the AMD R7 250 with Boost. This card for some reason has the name with Boost. It boosts to 1050 megahertz. It's the GDDR3 2 gigabyte variant of the card. There was also another with Boost 1 gigabyte card that had GDDR5 and it was actually the better buy back in the day because of the increased memory bandwidth. So it had less VRAM, but the increased memory bandwidth meant that it could actually perform better. At least that's my understanding. And from what I've seen in a few old reviews, that does seem to be the case. GDDR3 or DDR3 cards are usually weaker than their GDDR5 variants. So the R7250 launched in late 2013. It's absolutely tiny. It requires no six pin power. I found this in my box of untested GPUs that I bought on eBay a while back. And I've yet to give this a proper benchmarking session. This supports DX11.1. So we might find some of the results today surprising. The HDMI port didn't work, or so I thought, but since actually putting it in the PC here with my Ryzen 7 5700G, as you can see, we have a display behind us with the HDMI port, so it seems to have fixed itself, which is always welcome. Let's get into some games then and see what we can actually run, because after testing the GTX 650, I decided not to actually follow through with a longer benchmarking video, because... It barely supports anything these days. DX11 point nothing isn't really ideal for 2022 gaming, unless you're playing older titles. But the R7250 in action, let's see what it can do. All right, so I'm sorry for any background noise, but this card sounds like it's literally dying. If it was a person, well, I think I'd be on call to an ambulance right about now. At 720p here, of course, which seems to make the most sense, we are running Cyberpunk 2077. We've got Ultra Performance FSR enabled with Fidelity FX Sharpening, just to make the picture a little more crisp. Gameplay-wise, crowd density is set to low, and for everything else, well, we've gone with the lowest settings. Remember, since patch 1.6, the low preset doesn't actually turn everything way down to low. So I've actually made sure to set everything to its respective lowest. What we're going to do is hit continue, and I am most certainly not looking forward to what is going to happen here. I have a feeling we're going to get about 15 frames per second, but leave your predictions down below right now before the game loads. What do you think? 15? 20? 25 FPS? 30 FPS? Let's jump in and see what it can do. Okay, so oh, 30 frames per second. We have loaded in right in the middle of Night City, so we're in a pretty demanding area here, but yeah, well, 37 frames per second. Let me begin the benchmark. Let me just make sure the overlay is working. There we go. Begin the benchmark. Now what we'll do is we'll just run around and wipe out a few pedestrians just for the sake of it trying to dip that fps figure a little bit now i honestly couldn't play like this i think this is too far gone in terms of visual degradation i mean the visuals here are quite hard to decipher i can't tell if that's a pedestrian over there or a piece of street furniture so you can understand my predicament this i believe is one of the fastest cars in the game and let's see what it does to our frame rate. If we go speeding through Night City, I am wondering just how much the frame rate will dip. Already, we've only just got in and it's dropped to 23 frames per second. Um, is this playable? Not really. Is the frame rate okay? Uh, not really. So, a good start, but it's what I expected. In fact, it's better than I expected, in, in all honesty. I thought 15 frames per second, so at least 20, despite the terrible visuals, is very welcome indeed let's move on to our next title we'll just end the benchmark there okay elden ring unfortunately will not launch the screen's gone a little bit yellow i think the adrenaline software has set the custom color option to on it does that sometimes so i think next we'll try spider-man remastered and see just how well this does now i'm not expecting this to run so far, we've actually fired up to the settings menu, which is good. 1080p, you must be having a laugh. Let's go down to 720p. We'll keep FSR on, but we'll set it to ultra performance mode because, believe me, I think we'll need it. Dynamic res off, 60 hertz refresh rate. That all looks good to me. We'll go with the very low preset. So 
basically everything is down to its lowest. Yeah, clicking OK took us straight into the game, so there's actually no problem with starting Spider-Man Remastered, but I mean, this is certainly not what I would call playable by any stretch of the imagination. I am not sure yet if what I'm seeing is what you're going to see, <laughs> but if you can't see it, well, there's some sort of weird blur across the entirety of the screen. Perhaps this is some sort of FSR compatibility issue with this older card, but if we turn FSR off, which I'm not going to do, then the frame rate is just going to absolutely plummet, so it really isn't worth it. This is a no-win situation. Less than 15 frames per second here. Though, mind you, this is better than what the GTX 650 can achieve, which is, I think, a comparative card that came out within a few months of the R7 250, because these days, that won't start games like this. DX 11.1 is not supported by that thing, so it'll just outright refuse to boot, at least from what I've tested. All right, so Forza Horizon 5, I'm not sure this is gonna run. I think this is a DX 12 exclusive, so I don't think this is gonna get past the launch screen. I'm pretty sure we'll get a driver warning at the minimum. Yeah, we have detected the following hardware issues. Your graphics drive is older than the minimum supported version. That's because we can't install a newer version using this old card. We can, however, click ignore warning, which might actually take us into the game. Will it? No. There we go, I didn't think so, but it was worth a try nonetheless. Okay, <laughs> as you can see, it's going well. There's a floating stone attacking me here. Uh, the, the assets haven't quite finished loading in. <laughs> there is supposed to be some sort of... Oh, there he is. Okay, yeah, this is not exactly playable. I mean, if it takes five minutes for the assets to load in, then, yeah, that is not going to be an ideal gaming session. Let's see if we can take him down with such a low frame rate. I mean, 21 FPS, not terrible. A bit like Cyberpunk where it looks awful, but it doesn't actually run terribly, just abysmally is what I'd have to say. Now, if we make our way towards this massive geezer over here, and hopefully we can wipe him out. I can't really control the game either. It's feeling really sort of oversensitive because there's a lot of input delay happening. There is a render scale option as well, so we can just turn the game down to 50% if we wish, but it's not going to look much better than this and it's probably going to perform very similar, if not a little worse. All right, so Red Dead Disaster 2. As you can see, 20 frames per second in Valentine. Now this is with the lowest settings which the game actually defaulted to. This, however, has recently seen the introduction of AMD FSR 2.0, which I'm going to enable now. As you can see, everything is basically at its respective lowest. Water quality is custom because I've set it to its lowest using the slider elsewhere. I'm going to go with the Let's try the balanced FSR mode first of all, and we'll set sharpening about halfway. Let's see what this does to our performance. Hopefully, we'll see some sort of improvement, but if not, we'll jump back in and change this to performance mode instead. It's literally done nothing. It has done nothing. To <laughs> One FPS increase is what balanced FSR mode has done. So what we'll do is we'll jump back in now and we'll actually set it to performance instead. I did have TAA set to medium, but I think that actually gets turned off. Yeah, when you when you enable FSR, TAA, and any other forms of anti-aliasing basically get disabled. 21, 22, 23, 23 FPS, okay. So this is probably about as good as we're going to get from this game. <laughs> We can't do anything else with the quality settings. We certainly can't turn textures up. We can from the INI file, but what we're going to actually get is a bigger performance loss. If I begin the benchmark here, take a trip through the town. We'll just nick this stagecoach, I think, right away. Our frame rate is dropping a little bit below 20. The slow-paced nature of Red Dead when you're just sort of exploring means that 20 FPS doesn't feel as bad as it would in other and first-person games. Okay, I've crashed my horse. But it's still not going to be ideal, especially in those heavier action sequences. I don't think I can 
with an honest heart say that this is going to be playable for most people. I certainly couldn't recommend playing like this. It's, it is in no way an acceptable experience really. Welcome to The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt's very deceiving main menu. This always gives us around 300 frames per second even on lower end cards and when you fire it up you think oh this is going to be a very solid experience but wait until we get into the actual game. 1920 by 1080 I've gone for here so that's pretty daring. I've actually set everything to low from the graphics menu and I've also set everything to its respective lowest in the post processing menu as well. So yeah we are set up for the best performance albeit except from the resolution which I've actually left at 1080p but we might have to adjust that in a moment so let's get into the game and see just how well this does. Now you might be looking at this footage and thinking Steve this doesn't look like 1080p gameplay does it? And that would be because I've had to drop the resolution to 720p. When I stopped recording I jumped into the game at 1080 and we were hitting about 16 frames per second which isn't well it's not ideal so I had to use 720p resolution and even now we're not getting 30 frames per second as an average especially in busier city areas like here for example now the R7 250 as I mentioned at the start comes in two variants GDDR3 and DDR5 the DDR5 card would be the better choice but I don't think I could probably recommend either one unless you are playing really low end games and you can pick it up for really cheap. The lack of DX12 support as well means that you are going to have a pretty difficult time in getting a lot of modern games running. The Witcher 3 here, uh, you could get away with it again if you're really desperate but I wouldn't recommend it. Especially not the GDDR3 version of the R7250, sorry R7250 with boost. Ah, I knew I could count on GTA 5 to give me at least 30 frames per second. I did actually start off at 1080p, but the game wasn't having it. I mean, we were running at less than 30 frames per second, so I switched to 720p instead, and now we are getting closer to 60. Yeah, actually, you know what? 60 FPS isn't too much of a rare event. We are actually seeing that quite often, more so, in fact. I just saw 68 there, which was pretty solid. 69 would have been nicer, but there we go. Let's just head over to Taco Bomb over there and uh, cause some carnage, see how our frame rate holds up. When we're out of the car, the frame rate does even better. We're talking 60, 70 FPS. So yeah, 720p is the way to go on the 2 gig GDDR3 R7 250 with boost. I don't really understand that name. I mean, a lot of cards back then had the boost clock, so yeah, I'm not quite sure on why they had to specify with boost but never mind it, it does what it says on the tin boosts to 1050 megahertz and stays there in pretty much every situation let's move on to another title i think we'll finalize with fortnite to see how well that runs i'm expecting good things but let's find out okay so fortnite also gave us a driver warning but we just click no to the question do we want to upgrade our drivers because well we can't 1920 by 1080 we're using the performance beta API here. Everything is on low, view distance is on far, and 3D resolution at the moment is on 100%, but we might have to change that depending on how well it performs. So let's get into it and see just how well Fortnite does. Now you're probably thinking that this does not look like 1080p native once again, does it? And that's because I've had to drop things to 60% render scale. No game today I think has been tested at native 1080p with the R7 250 with boost which was to be expected going into it but there we go Fortnite with 60% resolution scale of 1080p in performance mode will run with over 60 frames per second but there will be a few drops below that let's see what's in this chest and see if we can wipe anyone out before they get me oh and now I've run out of ammo which isn't good so we're just going to have to we're just going to have to see what we can do with the pickaxe here. Oh yes, look at that. Look at that, perfect. Let's end the video. Fortnite, best result of the day. The R7 250 with boost, apart from Fortnite, is pretty much useless. At least the GDDR3 version. So there we go, the R7 250. This is probably the first and last time that I'll be testing this graphics card. We've tested the R7 250X in the past, a couple of years ago, and I'm sure it did okay, but the standard R7 250, especially the GDDR3 card, 
I don't think I need to revisit this anymore. It's not very good, and going forward, it's certainly not going to get any better. But if you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.